the missing link in Singularity was to have a facility where you can actually go and feel what is the brand, like what is uh, what is this SNG shit? Singularity, Team Singularity, Team Singularity, Team Singularity. Team singularity. Team singularity. So uh, Adle, obviously we are sitting here in the new Singularity and Hyper facilities. Yeah. Uh, how do you think the, the whole uh, place has turned out? Uh, I'm really happy. Um, as you can see, it's still a work in progress. Um, I would say we're like um, probably 85% done. Uh, we kind of need all the details on the walls, all the folio for the windows and you know, uh, the detailed feeling. Um, I'm kind of a perfectionist. So, so for me, for me, for, for many people, they would say it's, it's pretty much done. Um, but, but there is still, uh, I would say if we were done, uh, it wouldn't be me. Uh, I think we could always, there is always something yeah. we can improve out here. Um, but I think the general feeling out here right now, um, as it functions and also together with um, with Hydra um, eSport uh, in the other place of the facilities. I think it I think it works really well together um, and I'm really happy to see it work. Um, yep. So yeah. And now uh, now you have three teams uh, visiting and using all the, the facilities and, and uh, they're also enjoying it, it seems like. It, it seems like uh, yeah. we have some of the Counter-Strike guys sitting here uh, behind me. Um, and yeah, actually, everyone here is Counter-Strike uh, since it's Copenhagen Games. Um, so we have the Swedish Academy team, the US main team, and then, of course, our female team. Um, and I think for everyone who has been here, like for from for the last four days, um, I think most of them has grown accustomed to, to the facilities. And I think the most important part, you know, about our overall facilities is that it's pretty spacious so you have room for everyone um, you ha and the PC specs are yeah <laughs> what they are crazy good so so everyone is pretty fucking happy uh, yeah. with the computers and yeah. the performance um, and yeah I think uh, I think for for all the three different teams now you can see the American team has definitely tried more food camps yeah. than the others um, but it seems like this is uh, superior to most of um, the experiences everyone yeah. have had before uh, with boot camps. And so, do you think this is uh, helping the teams uh, develop uh, into also becoming more professional and and developing their skill uh, as as a team I, I, with, with I, these I, facilities? I, I, yeah, I think I think uh, I think everything we missed before, um, and I think every talent that haven't reached like the the proper potential of what they actually could under our banner i think that was because we didn't have the facilities now we have the facilities now we are uh, in total we have around 70 computers out here together with hydra um which pretty much accommodates all our teams if we uh, took in everyone right um i think the most important part out here still is the feeling that you get from from being here and the atmosphere um, you have many youngsters who comes with their parents um, it's kind of like I want to start eSport and then also you have the professional like parts that has built been put on top of Hydra and it just it just works really well here like um, and 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 yeah I think you know the missing link in Singularity was to have a facility where you can actually go and feel what is the brand, like what is uh, what is this SNG shit, yeah. uh, you know? Because now, now there is a physical place that represents basically, the SNG yeah, experience. And, uh, yeah, and the, and the quality that we try to bring because um, we didn't go on compromise when we started this uh, facility or partnership with Hydra. We did it so that we could take it to the le to the next level and to and to make a proper development structure so that all our teams and all our future players will have you know a home to thrive and uh, yeah that's pretty much the vision and the mission in in everything together like um, and and i think for many sponsors like if like for both sponsors investors partners like 
all the people behind the curtain, basically. I think for them, one of the most important part about eSport is to try and understand it. And what you, where you can be completely blank before and then come out here, you can spend half a day here and suddenly you feel like it makes so much sense, this eSports. Like, like this is what yeah. everything is, right? Um, it's just, you know, it's just a good taste of what eSport is in general. And together with <clears throat> Singularity, Hydra, you, you can see the, the youngsters, as you said, they're having fun, but you also see the more serious part of what eSport uh, actually is and what eSport has become and what it can become for these young players. Of course, like, uh, like we're the natural like um, building on top of the academy structure that they have created with the membership club in Hydra. So I think I think the most important part is to be inspired and to be motivated and just as well as <laughs> just as well as the US guys who is uh, of course our main team also have idols like everyone has idols even uh, like even myself I have my, my own idols in, in different aspects and and I think I think when you I think even if you brought your idol to this facility they would be like <laughs> You're you're pretty well going, mate. Yeah. You're, uh, like it, it fits the right structure to to you know to develop your talent. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Cool. And uh, I guess from now on, uh, the stars is the limit. <laughs> the stars or maybe is the limit. <laughs> nah, I think uh, I think uh, for us, um, it's all about trying to build a sustainable ecosystem here in Singularity. Um, we have taken our experience and knowledge from, uh, yeah, as you know, <laughs> multiple gaming titles and both console, PC, mobile gaming. Like, we've been around the block and back again. Um, now we cut, cut into our core and and the games that we have our specialties in. Um, and luckily for us, it's the top performing esports as well. So. So it makes sense, um, but but for us, it's all about building concepts and systems, and and try to do something different yeah. from everyone else. Because uh, and it's not because I'm saying everyone else is doing it wrong, like uh, not at all. I just I just think we can do better. I think that's the best way to say it. Um, I think uh, I think right now with everything we have both behind the curtain and the full organization and uh, and the systems and infrastructure we put in place i think we have you know the building blocks to to become a top professional esports international organization yes. with multiple headquarters because this could just as well be in for example usna um, yeah. and see how far we have come in only a few years Three years, like three it's, years. It's, it's, it's it's literally three yeah. years since we started. Like on this, more or less this exact date, it's fucking three years. Sorry yeah, for cursing. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> with a with a Copenhagen Games win. We'll see. Yeah, nah. Let's uh, let's hopefully um, prove that um, it was a mistake not giving us an invite in the first place. Um, but uh, but yeah, I I hope. For me, this is an experience in so many different aspects. Um, Copenhagen Games is like is the building block from where we started. Like the first CS:GO, te like the first team we even had. Like even before we had jerseys or a logo, <laughs> we actually had Singularity as a name, and we were competing in Copenhagen Games 2017. No, it, no, because 17 we won. So it must have been 2016, yeah. um, together with Valde and that roster. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah. So I so 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 it's yeah. I still really can't believe it's only been three years. It feels like a lifetime to be honest. <laughs> to be honest, like I feel like I like before I was I uh, what was I was 26 when I started. Now I'm soon soon to be 30, oh. and. Uh, and for me, I think I've grown at least 
like 20 years, 20 years in age, older you know? like <laughs> like since i started so mentally and physically so, like, like, i think <laughs> mentally i was probably still still like 21 when i was 20 26 which is a good thing i uh, forever young in heart but um yeah with with the stress level and everything that um i think it's also because if you're in esports right now like you have every chance in the world to be able to build something that could possibly last a lifetime or longer um, because this is the new black like um, you never have there been an a sport that has grown this rapidly like and and that's because everyone was gaming in the first place now we just have you know a common a common way to make it mainstream and make yeah. it okay and make it acceptable and you know for many people Gaming became eSport when eSport kind of made the breakthrough in the presses. Um, so I think there is still like a very mixed opinion about what's, uh, you know, what is gaming, what is eSport. Um, everything is gaming in my world, like both at the professional level, but also the girl playing her app on her phone. That's gaming as well. Yeah. Um, you have eSports. Esports is actually just when you kind of decide, okay, I want to take my gaming to the next level, um, and, and I then wanna beat the competition. Well. And I want to beat the competition. I like I want to be number one. Yeah. Like basically, when you decide I want to be number one, of course everyone is casually gaming and everybody wants to be number one. But when you actually, you know, put measures into place to become number one, like when you start um having a sleep schedule or start practicing against opponents yeah. where it actually doesn't count or isn't official matches yeah, that's, like that's where you take it to the next level exactly like in its e-sport yeah exactly it's when you go from just being entertained to actually you know participate and 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 see it as a sport yeah um and i think you know a wise thing to say for all the gamers out there like if you want the mainstream to accept that it's a sport act like it's a sport like the more professional all the people involved in the esports and gaming industry are the more serious it will be looked at from both a financial aspect of, um, but also like investment wise and 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 also like the whole media part because i think everyone in esports and gaming is kind of like when will these people realize yeah. streaming like and it has definitely come far but when i see uh, the, the mothers to these fortnite kids they come here and they actually see both of the worlds yeah it, it really um, gives them a better uh, understanding of, of the whole picture and support instead of just yeah and so of yeah of course support also for their children and and uh, that's also going to make them thrive if, if they're getting support from from home uh, and i'm sure it wasn't like that when you were younger and Hell no! And, and, and no, I, I can tell hell you, no. just five years ago it, it was done like that. So it has grown tremendously over, over just like say five, ten years. Yeah, you can say like um, so. Basically, around fifteen years ago, I was what you would call a pro player in uh, Warcraft Three, the Frozen Throne. Basically, the building, the beta of all beta versions <laughs> that created all the metas in every fucking game. Like, everything mobile-wise, at least. Um, you know, and it all started there, or not all, but uh, many games started from that game. And um, back then, I was, of course, it was play game. I was playing both, of course, solo and duo and, uh, and teamed up in three. And I actually qualified for Blisk. Like, the only thing I ever been pro at, like in in gaming wise or with that experience, is yeah, it's around 15 years ago, and I was, uh, <laughs> and I I actually told my teammates I was 17 or 18, so that I was actually able to participate if yeah. we qualified for something. Um, then when they realized I was 14, um, and I asked my mom. Can I go to? Uh, I think it. I think it was Vegas or Los Angeles. It was hosted. Um, and then when I asked, she was just looking at me. Uh, no, <laughs> you're not. you are 14, and yeah. uh, I can't go. Your dad can't go. And I was just like, 
oh, why do I need you? Like, <laughs> and they were like, I'm you're 14. 14. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, nah, but um, but then I, I actually never went, and um, I, I have so many hours in that game anyways. But, um, but yeah, so for me, I didn't, uh, like, even though I might have had the chance, actually, to do something about it, then the scene haven't been grown. Like, uh, for, uh, like there was like a time when it just kind of sparkled and then everything went away and then suddenly marketing budgets grew and um, and, and and it exploded because we're in the technology informational age like yeah. Yeah, and everything goes so fast both information and technology development um, and the platforms around it so i think that if you want to keep up the pace you kind of uh, you kind of fast realize that you need more hours than 24 <laughs> in, in, in a day, a day. Yeah. um i'm doing my best to uh, to, to redefine to, to redefine uh, yeah. yeah or to put to, it to the limit basically <laughs> yeah but but um but i enjoy every moment I, I enjoy every moment i spend in it even though um even though i still feel like a poor man <laughs> nah, it, it's only my bank account <laughs> Uh, Spiritually, honest, you're uh, very rich. Yes, on the experiences I, in, in, and, uh, in experiences, I am the wealthiest. And driving back and forth in, to the yeah, airport as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> yeah, I am a pro driver. Uh, no, but you're you're giving the chance that you you're giving the chance to to kids nowadays that you didn't have back then. And exactly, and it goes I, and full I, circle. And, um, and I think you know, if I want people to do the best, uh, or my players to do the best, uh, I need them to understand my visions and my mission and and what i want to do and and the level of care i want to put into it because otherwise you know i don't want to be wasting other people's time if they could do better somewhere else um and that's you know that's the basic like thought behind everything so that's also why i micromanage every part like it, like i would love to you know go on a vacation and just just uh, just chill uh, for a moment but but, but for me, it's all about, you know, because if I were on the other side of the table, like, I would really appreciate the level of care that was put into it from my from the organization I was in. Because you, you want to have that feeling that you're special, but also part of something that is also a unit and special. Um, and it's hard unless you get the t chance to, you know, be uh, under four eyes and just have a casual talk yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah but um, thanks for the for the chat and thanks um, for the chat as well and uh, let's welcome to it. welcome to the headquarters let's go baby let's go